This is part 25 of Blazor tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss data binding in Blazor, both one-way data binding and two-way data binding with examples. In the interest of time, for the purpose of this demo, I've already created a new Blazor component and the name of the component is data binding demo. I've also created the corresponding code behind class and all I have done so far is included this HTML in the component view and in the component class, I've created a property with the name, name and initialized it with a value of Tom. Now what we want to do is display this property value within our component view. So we use the add character and reference the property name. Now to get to this component, this is the URI slash data binding demo. There we go. We see the name property value. So what we have here is one way data binding data flowing from our component class to the component view. So in the view, we are binding to the name property that we have defined in our component class. Whenever this property value changes, the UI is automatically updated to reflect that change. At the moment, we are binding to a component class property. We can also bind to a razor expression. Let's look at a quick example. I'm going to include a new property here, gender, and it is initialized with a value of male. Within our component view, we are going to bind to a razor expression. Here is our razor expression within a pair of parentheses. So if the gender property value is male, then we are prepending this text Mr. to whatever value we have in the name property. If the gender is female, then we are prepending this text Miss to again whatever value we have in the name property. So let's save our changes and take a quick look at the browser. There we go. Mr. Tom as expected. We can also bind to an HTML element. In this example, we are binding to an HTML input element. Notice here, we are binding the value attribute of this input element to the same name property we have in the component class. There we go. In the input element, we now see the name property value. What we have here is still one-way data binding. That is data flowing from our component class to the component view. So whenever this name property value in the component class changes, the UI is automatically updated to reflect that change. But what if we change the value on the UI within this text box? For example, if I change the name from Tom to David, will the corresponding property name in the component class be updated? Well, no, we still have only one-way data binding. Data is flowing in only one direction from the component class to the component view. It's not flowing in the other direction, that is from the component view to the component class. Now, let's look at an example of two-way data binding. Let me make a copy of this input element. By binding to the value attribute of the input element, we still have only one-way data binding. Whenever the value in the input element changes, we want the corresponding property in the component class to be updated. So for that, we are going to bind to on change event of the input element. This is event handling. We discussed event handling in detail in our previous video. At the moment, we are using a lambda as the event handler. We can also create a separate named method within our component class and then specify the name of that method as the event handler in the HTML right here. However, to keep this example simple, I chose the Lambda approach. Notice when I hover the mouse over this on change event, you can see from the IntelliSense, the change event args object is passed as a parameter to the event handler. So I named the parameter E. And then within the Lambda, we are retrieving the value that the user has typed in the UI using the value property of the change event args object. And the value property returns that value as an object. We are converting that to a string and assigning that to the name property within our component class. So with this value attribute binding, the data is flowing from the component class to the view. And with this on change event binding, the data is flowing from the UI to the component class. Notice when the component is initially rendered in the input element, we have the name property value. Now let me change this to David. And when I press the tab key, this input element loses focus. And that's when the corresponding property in the component class, that is the name property, is automatically updated with this value. 
there we go. All these other elements are one-way data bound to name property and they display the new value David. To simplify two-way data binding, in Blazor, we have bind attribute. Instead of binding to the value attribute and then including an on change event handler, we can simply use the bind attribute and then bind to the name property within our component class. Notice the same way as before, when we change the name and when the element loses focus, that change is reflected everywhere. Now, what if we do not want to wait until the element loses focus? As we are typing in the input element and as the name is being changed, we want the corresponding property in the component class to be updated. We can achieve this by specifying the event name that we want to bind to within the two-way data binding. So let's make a copy of this. In addition to specifying the property that we want to bind to, we also specify the name of the event that we want to bind to. So we use the bind attribute and then use colon and then specify the event parameter and the event that we want to bind to is on input. This event is raised as the value in the input element is being changed. Notice now as we type the new name in the input element, the change is reflected everywhere. To bind to element attributes other than the value attribute, use this syntax bind dash attribute name along with bind dash attribute colon event. Let's understand what we mean by this with an example. In the component class, we defined color property with a default value background color colon white. In the component view, we are binding this property to an input element. So with this two-way data binding in place, if we now change the background color, for example, from white to red in the input element, the color property in the component class is automatically updated with the new value. Now, here's what we want to do. We want to apply this background color to this div element. And to do that, we have to bind to the style attribute of the div element. So we are using bind dash attribute syntax here. So the name of the attribute that we want to bind to is style and the event is on change. Let's see this in action. Within our component class, we have the color property and within our component view, we have the same HTML that we have seen on the slide. Default background color is white. Let's change it to yellow and when the element loses focus, it's applied to the div element. Let's try pink. There we go. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.